Hello and welcome to Fish Out Northwest. Wayne and Tommy Donlin. I'm proud of all the fish. <laughs> what do you think, Tommy? It's the best. Nice one. Hello and welcome to Fish on Northwest, Dwayne England, and yes, Mr. Scott Cole. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for making the drive here. You've had a busy couple days. We'll get into that in a little yes. bit. Uh, Tommy is out uh, this week getting ready for the WTC pre-fishing today, and he's you know down there at the coast. So uh, you graciously uh, said, yeah, absolutely, I'll come by. And uh, helping out not only as an in-studio guest, but he's got, you got the daunting task of the, uh, the co-host responsibilities. Oh, boy. So oh boy. You got some work ahead of you. I got broad shoulders. We yeah. can handle this. We'll get to all of this uh, coming up here shortly. So I want to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, so glad you could join us here. And if it's your first time on Root Sports, I want you to take some time and please uh, jump on over to our webpage at www.fishhuntnw.com. They're going to find a couple of fantastic coupons to take full advantage of. Edge Rods, FHN20 at checkout. That coupon is going to save you 20% on all fishing rods all the time if they're not previously attached to another reduced pricing or special. FHN20 at checkout, 20% off your entire purchase. And of course, Phelps Game Calls. Uh, we've teamed up with Phelps Game Calls and they are on board here at Fish Hunt Northwest. Fish Hunt NW10 at checkout. You're going to save 10% on all Phelps Game Calls all year round. Please take advantage of that. Let them know that we sent you on uh, your way. So with that... Uh, Scott, uh, partner at Brad's uh, Killer Fishing Gear. You yep. know, I've become friends over the last couple of years. Spend quite a bit of time in the water as of late. It's been we have. It's been fantastic. fun. A chance to get out and catch some <laughs> fish and tug on some different types of fish. Yeah, we've been kind of all over the place. There's lots of opportunity out there right now. Whether we're on the Columbia, we'll talk about buoy ten here coming up shortly. We got you know some time out there in area ten. We've been chasing sturgeon. We've just been lots of things to do. But we also got some closures that are going on. Kind of second half of the show tonight. Yeah. We'll spell this out here in a little bit, but boy, I tell you, there's some people pretty fired up. You and I are a little bit, uh, a little bit miffed on some of the, you know, openings and closings happening. Yeah, but you know what? I kudos to WDFW. Um, easiest thing in the world would be to pass on this, mm -hmm. and I'm just, I'm so glad that that they're saying yes. Yeah. Oh, as let's far as coming and, on and tonight. Talk, yes. Yeah, and talk about let's it. Let's go on and talk about this. Let's provide some transparency. So I am just really happy about that. Yeah, it's, it's easy to just dismiss it and say no, we don't have the personnel, exactly. we don't have the time, right? And uh, you know, we just, it's, and they don't see the benefit in it, but. They're, they're trying to, hey, you know what, here's an opportunity, here's a platform, let's get the info out, let's uh, let's make it happen. Well, so, and this show has always all been all about transparency. Yeah, let's, let's just show it. Right, the, the absolutely. Info. Yeah. Yep. So. so we got a lot to get through this evening, so we might as well uh, get to it. Let's run down the show here. Tons of info to bring your way. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Looks like the uh, the old uh, text, uh, text line here is cranking up. Lots of things to uh, be said here this evening. So starting off, Scott, uh, you and I in studio, co-host duties as I mentioned, but we're gonna have a discussion on Columbia River, Buoy 10, moving up to Columbia that you and I have experienced here recently. And of course, mm. if we can fit it in some, uh, some Area 10 opportunity that we, uh, <laughs> boy, took full advantage of the other day with getting my folks out there. How much fun is that? Uh, Columbia Sturgeon Fishing, FHN On The Water, part one, with our buddy Tom Browning, Browning Sport Fishing, Brad's and Edge were also there. Boy, we had a great time. We want to show you that. Um, then we'll walk on through some updates of our programming, what to expect as we progress here on Root Sports. We want to make sure you guys are up to date on what's coming in the next few weeks. Uh, then Columbia Sturgeon Fishing, FHN On The Water Part 2 with Tom Browning. Uh, we got to close it out. And boy, did we have a fantastic day. I think I remember right, we had 32 sturgeon to hand was that, there a really big fish in part two uh there may be there may be to be continued <laughs> to be continued um then one that a lot of folks are anticipating this evening wdfw mark uh, baltzell salmon and steelhead fisheries management area 11 closure once again 
to Chinook retention. Why does this keep happening? And uh, we're going to get to the bottom of that. And then we're going to follow that up with a second segment with Mark. He's graciously just said he would uh, spend some time with us this, this evening. And we have far too much content to cover, so we're going to break down Area 10, the Chinook retention closure. And how about that reduction in coho limit? That one's got people scratching their heads. Then we close out the show with some openings and closings and some additional announcements. So stick with us through the first half of the show. I think you'll enjoy the content uh, as we uh, bring it to you. Second half of the show is going to get some brass tacks, going to get some questions put out there, some answers, hopefully. we got a packed show. Going to be a little bit different. Uh, we, we ran into a little bit of a snafu, a Zoom update, apparently. Has us sidelined with our Zoom with Mark, but no big deal. Technology is what it is. We'll have them on the phone. We'll still drive the content. We'll still ask, ask the questions, and we'll get the answers from him later on the show. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. Going to jump out for a quick break. We come back, going to talk about a number of fisheries going on throughout the Puget Sound and what you need to be out there taking advantage of. Uh, back here in a few after this break right here, Fish in Northwest. The Fines Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defines Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defines Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defines Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. Back here to the show, Fish Up Northwest, Wayne England, and in studio guest and co host uh, Scott Cole, yes, sir, partner at Brad's Killer Fishing Gear. And um, boy, you guys are doing some good stuff over there. We've got some stuff coming along, we've got some product coming in and going out just as quick. Oh man, you are so busy. I'm lucky to get you out on the water from time to time, but uh, being what it is, we have found our way. And you actually, uh, let's get caught up with you. You just spent the sure. last two days down at Buoy 10. Yes, now the opener August 1st, we had big tide swings. Some of the in-river fishing was a little tough. The ocean was fishing well. And mm -hmm. then I talked to a few guys down there the last few days, and the uh, the ocean slowed down a bit. The tides got softer, and the lower river seemed to be fishing okay. Uh, we got some funky weather that kind of moved in. You guys yeah. got rain down there yesterday? A little change, yeah. We got some rain. It was uh, refreshing, but uh, there's a train change in the barometer, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it affected some fishing. Yeah, there's some really good big names, some really good fishermen out there having a tough time scratching out some fish. End of the day, uh, you know, most people got fish. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, buoy 10, yeah, right place, right time. Did you land on them? Did you chase that phone bite? Did yep. you hit it in time? Yep. Yep. And uh, the windows were shorter than, than normally. Sure. The, the bites were, were, were there. They were just short bites. One thing people who have <clears throat> never been there that don't understand, when you say buoy 10, you're talking about an area geographically oh, that is four miles wide, massive. 15 yeah. miles long, mm -hmm. say from Tongue Point out to buoy 10. It's so, subject to swells, yep, wind, yep, wind chop. Yep. So you make a run from Change here to there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's it could, crazy. It could be a half hour. It could be an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And chasing bites 
typically doesn't pay out very well, but going there, as I have found in years past, with a plan, knowing where your tides are, yeah. what those fish want to do on these tides, size of tides, where to be and when. I mean, it's, it's that is, you know, it's cliche, but that is truly the epitome of buoy 10, where to be and when. If you understand that, you can find some success, but weather change and conditions, barometer change. I'll tell you what, I saw a post here, I think it was today or yesterday, Bill Monroe Jr., who mm -hmm. just absolutely kills it down there. Yeah, well, yeah. He had Buzz That's Ramsey, Andy Walgamont, Trey Carskadden, yeah. uh, a few other folks on board, kind of a, a, a you know, yeah. player of players. Who's who? Yeah. yeah. And um, I saw them standing at the dock with three fish. Yeah. Okay, and in, in days before, even on those bigger tides, Bill's just stuff in the box. So it's an example of buoy 10. It's a love-hate thing. It is, and you it's know. about adjustments too, right? So yeah. uh, you go down there and you think, hey, I caught this, you know, this has always been my favorite lure. This has always been my favorite bumper setup. So yeah, it was kind of interesting. One of the things that we noticed, and it took us a little while, mm -hmm. um, but we got a fish as we're putting out. We got a fish on a turn. Yeah. Got a fish on the retrieve. Ah, change in speed. Yes. Elevation and speed. So what are we going to do? Yeah. We got to change up our tactics. And in between, we had dry spells. Yeah. So let's change things up a little bit. Let's shorten, shorten our bumpers. Yeah, there let's you go. shorten our leaders. Yep. Let's uh, make some adjustments yep. and make it happen. And uh, yeah, and that's what it's about. And those that stick with the same plan and don't ever, you know, change. try those different things, mm -hmm. oftentimes <laughs> will end up back at the dock with empty pockets. Yeah. Well, a valid point. Now, it looks like there's a good push of fish that are moving in on oh, these tides and whatnot. Really and good. the nice thing is those fish, as they move up river, we have, a, we have a boundary that's been put into the regulations where it gets up to a certain point. You can keep wild fish. Yes. And so then that fishing, as it progresses here, you get up around, you know, Kelso Longview, Kalama, Kathlam, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, those fisheries start doing pretty well. Yes. And uh, you and I were actually down there last week, and, and it was a pleasure to have Brad on board. And I think we got three bites that day. One good one stuck. We got that real nice, you know, north of 20-pound fish. Um, I would have to say you got one really nice north well, of 20-pound fish. Well, it happened to bite fish. the rod that was close to me. <laughs> yeah, so, it was a gorgeous uh, fish. Yeah, it was yeah, a dandy. No, it was and, fantastic. Uh, got one like that just a few days prior as well. Uh, it's not a lot of bites, but the few that you get, man, I yeah. tell you what, 73, that morning our water was almost 74 degrees yep. but you wouldn't know it based on the fight in that fish no that no. thing unbelievable so the nice thing is more of those buggers are coming you guys got some wild fish down there below holy cow that uh, one today yeah mid 30s mid 30s all day unbelievable yep mid 30s it shows all day. you the caliber of these fish that are coming in how healthy it is the ocean conditions there's some three four five year fish that are coming through yeah. and i tell you what uh those guys upriver get set because they are coming be excited <laughs> they're going to be some great opportunities great opportunities yes another good opportunities out there in puget sound uh and we'll get into the closures and what's going on with the chinook fisheries but hey man this is a hump year and uh, Jordan and I, we uh, had the opportunity to get my folks out the other day, and I put that post up. Mom's 81, Dad's 83. They want to go out fishing. We wore them out by 11 o'clock. It was like, <laughs> enough fish, we're done. Mom landed about a 12-pound Chinook hatchery fish that we had to let go. Had she ever caught a Chinook before? N nothing like this that, right? Nice. So it was kind of a travesty we had to let it go. But they but had she a caught it. Yeah, oh, yeah. She reeled it in one half crank at a time, but she ended up getting that bugger in, right? And just it. so proud of her. She's five foot nothing, and uh, she, you know, the rod is ten and a half feet. I tell her, <laughs> I go, hey, we're using size. fishing rods that are over twice the length that you are tall, <laughs> right. Right? right? Do that math. Anyway, it was fantastic. Got them onto an amazing day. Jordan helped me tremendously with the boat and the gear, and it was con We tried to fish four rods. Forget about it, man. It's just too much action. And the humpies this year, not just the size of these Chinook we're talking about. Yeah. You can tell by the ocean conditions, the humpies are like big. There's some healthy conditions Got going on. Got some fantastic yes. humpies out there in the salt water. So take advantage of those opportunities, that area 10, the, the humpy fishery and the coho right now as it's going on. Phenomenal family fishery, excellent opportunity to get the kids out. And they're catching humpies from the shore in a number of places throughout Puget Sound That's right insane. now, which is a yes. great way to get kids casting for them. So, uh, good opportunity in some regards out there. You just need to go find it and take advantage of it. All right, going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. Don't go anywhere. Uh, part one of our day we spent with our buddy Tom Browning Fun down day. there on the Columbia, going after catch and release sturgeon. Had a lot of fun. Check out this video right after the break right here, Fish on Northwest. Allied. The new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse china and lifting rakes to help you plane faster 
and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied Boats will have it for you. Contact Allied Boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975, providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer, offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, come visit us today. The outdoors await you. Here we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Here we go. There it goes. All right, hey everybody, Dwayne England. Fish on Northwest out here on the water once again today. Got a great cast of characters and crew with us this morning. Longtime friend. We go way back, Mister. Tom Browning, Browning Sport Fishing. We'll get into that a little bit later. Right? Years Something today. like that. Oh, yeah. My God. yeah. You guys are old. I know. Yeah. yeah. The guy with the mouth from the south that doesn't stop talking, Scott Call. Class of 66. <laughs> right there, buddy, huh? Oh, boy, yeah. Class of 66. So Owner at Brad, so glad you could join us once again today. Partner at Brad's. Yes, can. and of course, Alex Maslov, CEO of Edge Rods. You brought some Edge Rods for us to test out today. I did. Uh -huh. didn't tell me we we're going to be out here early. I well, thought this was going to be a nice afternoon trip, wake up. <laughs> you're here. here. No, you're here normal. after a little drive. Pretty normal day, man. Anyway, uh, we, we are, are, yes, we are, uh, we're going after Sturgeon. Yeah. Catch and release Sturgeon today, Catch Tom? Catch and release Sturgeon. Right, yeah. How's it been going? It's been very good. Pretty darn good? Very, very good. Any size to them? We getting some big ones? Or? Uh, last, biggest one last week was 66 inches. Okay. Wow. So well, there you I've go. Friends have been fishing it. They've been getting seven foot, eight foot. Nice. On a fairly regular basis. Just last week, I couldn't find the big one. Okay. So we're going to anchor up? Uh, we're actually going to spot lock on my bow mount. Perfect. It's freaking awesome. It's I hate like it. my Love anchor. doing that. Yeah, okay. So we'll be basically in a, in a, stable position getting the rods out running some sand shrimp live sand shrimp night crawlers got some herring got some pickled squid got a little bit of got everything. a little bit of everything worms, worms catch big fish worms, catch big fish. worms, catch, big worms fish. catch big fish all right we are ready to go we're going to get out there on the water and bring this to you sturgeon fishing with tom browning browning sport fishing here we go i didn't see that It was already there, but you can see the top of my trailer. I know Alex is going to catch this fish. 
There he is. All right. Yeah, we'll leave him. I see Tom discriminates against those of us that are lefties and righties. <laughs> <laughs> I got a mix of everything. Up. Oh, nice. nice little fish. Huh? You all right? Hey, huh? No, yeah, you you hanging in there? The pistoles? The pistoles. <laughs> First one of the morning. That didn't take long. Didn't figure he'd like that. Like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, here we are, number one. Bitch number Ready? one. <laughs> Pitch count. When you get bit like we just did and land a fish, whatever bait you still have on there, just wrap new bait over the top of it. There's no reason to take it off of there. If you end up part way through the day and end up with a big wad of stretchy thread on there, I'll cut that off or pull it off and throw it away and start all over. But, um, stretchy threaded on there, a couple half hitches on the end, you're ready to go. Yeah, you got him. There he is, little fella. That about typical size, Tom, on a lot of these out here? Or? No, these are about the smallest ones we've been catching. Okay. I think I got one that was probably about that long last week. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. McComey's customers are made in the Northwest for salmon, steelhead, lake trout, and kokanee. Our products come in a variety of sizes and colors to help you catch more fish. Find our products in stores or at McCombie'sCustomLures.com. Yep, for sure. Oh, yeah. Big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, geez, come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. We're going to show you how to make fishy reels. Welcome back here in studio to England, Scott Call, and uh, part one of the sturgeon. 
Yeah. Uh, so what a great day. Let me look back here. So this was a bit of a setup. I, I think I remember you calling me on the phone saying, Scott, boy, I got this great soundtrack that I'm putting <laughs> with your Sturgeon video. Yeah, well, it's applicable. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, uh, Eye of the Tiger right. or yeah. something. Yeah. Had no idea it was crickets. Well, but it has to be movement. You dude, know, we got a, a lot of movement. Move. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a classic. Yeah. <laughs> crickets. Like that. Oh, it gets better. We got part two coming up here uh, midway through the show, so make sure you stick around about that. Uh, hey, programming note. Uh, uh, here on Root Sports, um, we are, this be the official, and thank you for joining me, the official first uh, one full hour show here on Root Sports, bringing it to you. So when we get to the end of the first half of the show here, do not go anywhere, do not change that channel because we and are. And congrats, my man. Oh, you know what you. this means. Yeah. This means that you've been putting in your homework, you and mm. Jordan been putting in your mm. homework, preparing these shows, Tommy, yep. the whole team, yep. and, it's a, and Root Sports has just said, let's expand this to an hour. Let's do it. Yeah. How beautiful is that? Uh, it's, uh, I right. really feel uh, uh, accomplished here in that regard. So, yeah, we're going to be able to bring you yeah, every single week, 9 a.m., 9 to 10 a.m. on Sunday, uh, right here at Root Sports, uh, full-hour show, one-hour show. So uh, make sure you do not turn it off at the half hour because you're going to get another full half hour of that. Now, that being said, uh, this week we got a full hour. Next couple weeks, we'll Exception. be out on, Huh? Exceptions. Exception. We'll be out on the road. Uh, we won't be in studio creating content, so we're going to fill our one-hour time slot with 30-minute shows previously recorded. We have yet in just over a year to ever run reruns on our Root Sports programming, but for a couple weeks, we're going to run 30-minute content in our one-hour slot, two shows per week, 9 a.m., 9.30, you're going to get two uh, two episodes that we previously did here on Root Sports. So, but then uh, come September, what? Yeah, so it'll be into about September 10th. We'll have a uh, full one-hour uh, going uh, week after week, uh, relevant in-time content, bringing it to you every single week here in the studio, out on the water, in the woods. Hunting will start taking off. We'll start getting oh, some yeah. of that hunting content. So uh, pretty excited. Um, so I just want to make everybody aware. That's why we put in here a programming note. Uh, pay attention. We're gonna we're gonna move it to an hour, and you're gonna see whether it's you know half hour segments for the next few weeks, uh, whatever. But um, we got uh, we got more content coming up in regards to this uh, sturgeon day. You know. Oh, can't wait. That was just such a fun day with Tom. I hadn't spent, I've spent a few times out He's previously. He's such a good guy. Yeah, He's just really, a good group. I uh, mean, yeah. Browning Alex from Sport Edge Fishing. And, yes, Alex uh, from Edge was there. Uh, you were there. Jordan, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, Tom Browning, Browning Sports Fishing. I tell you what, he is, uh, he has so many fisheries dialed. And as far as family, you know, he loves to take a family out, get the kids out fishing. Sturgeon fishery is a fantastic opportunity to get the kids out. It is. It yeah. really is. I mean, they're not all big. They're not all oversized. You're going to see there on and part one and here in part two, we catch a lot of these uh, smaller, you know, three, four foot sturgeons, which for kids are a fantastic size to be fighting and reeling in. So Loved it when we showed up on the boat and he says, here's your pitch counter. Yeah. The actual pitch counter. You start keeping track of the number. And I was like, quick, you gotta be quick, kidding me. Quick. So um, a week prior, he had told me that they boated like 43. And I said, you shad fishing? He goes, no, that's sturgeon, right? So <laughs> anyway, we had a great time. We did put 32 to hand that day. And the uh, second half of the video will be coming up uh, here shortly, just after the break. So don't go anywhere. We're gonna jump out for a quick break. And when we do come back, we're gonna continue with this uh, full one hour content and second half or part two of our sturgeon fishery with Tom Browning, Browning Sport Fishing on the Columbia. We come back after this break right here, Fish in the Northwest. Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse china and lifting rakes to help you plane faster 
and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied Boats will have it for you. Contact Allied Boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Hey guys, I'm Big Mike. Come on down to the Edge Pro Shop and see me. We've got all the best brands under one roof. We've got Hawken, Procure, Short Bus, Pro Troll, Yakima Bait, Get Em Dry Jigs, Northwest Bait Scent, Daiwa Reels, North Fork Lures, North Wild, Brad's, Superfly, Rocky Mountain Tackle, and of course, the greatest rods ever built, Edge Rods. How's he feel, bud? Uh, in between yours and mine. Now we're talking size, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kind of explain the rigging you got here. It looks like your weight is on a slider, or am I? Yep. Uh, we rig these sliders on a 200 pound Power Pro or 250 pound. 200 pound works. I, I like it because it's easier to fit through the beads. Okay. 250 pound, you got to fight it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, four bead brad swivels both ends. That's called a McRosco snap. Yep. Makes it easy for changing baits out. Yep. Um, this one, I got a 10 ounce pyramid sinker, and they're on a, a Bowmax sliding swivel. Yeah. It's metal. Um, the metal is why we run the heavier um, bumper sure. material here. How long is that bumper? 36 inches. 36? Yeah, I cut it 36 inches, tie it off so it comes out about 34, oh, yeah. 33. So your travel on that slider is literally right between the bead chains, 36 yeah. inches. Yep. Yeah, okay. And, uh, you run the metal on your main line. It does fray this stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why we go to the heavier. I tried uh, the plastic coated stainless. It doesn't work. It one day and the plastic's all ratted mm -hmm. up. And, okay. And whatnot. So. Um, and then you got your pre rigged leaders, and you're yep. running both mono and dacron. And dacron. You switch back and forth, or just uh, on any given day. I. Yeah, I'll try it. What pound test is your leader on your mono? Uh, 50 pound on the mono. Okay. Uh, 65 pound mainline braid. Okay. Um, single single hook. Single six aught. Okay. Um, and you got sand shrimp and sand shrimp night crawlers a, wrapped a in night here. Crawler on it. Yeah. yeah. Explain the night crawler. I mean, you got a sand shrimp. It's alive, kind of. If if you wrap this one, kind of tore itself up. Um, if you run a night crawler on there, you wrap it around the center and let the rest of it hang over the back at mm -hmm. the end of the body mm -hmm. when them sand shrimp come up mouth on it it starts moving and it triggers the live bait in their head they tend to when the sturgeon, get a little sturgeon bit come up and mouth on it yeah, yeah gotcha um, okay so you got a little little action there kind yeah. of draws them yep. in they yeah. like live bait yeah they do okay all right and uh, a lot of people i mean you can fish herring pickled squid mm -hmm. uh, but that live bait bite it goes from a bite to where they just take it up take it and head to start the going okay and, nice and uh, all right we'll uh, pitch that thing out there. Ah. 
Yeah. That was a good one. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was a good one. This guy is not messing around. That's right. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. What were you saying? He had other plans. Here we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Here we go. Yeah, see, I wasn't messing around. Look at that guy, huh? Yeah, buddy, good job. Can release her. Yep. Sounds good. Oh yeah, here we go. Uh huh. Oh. Ho, ho. Yeah, that one was uh. That one did not give up easily. Yeah, Alex at 360. 10-6, 10-66, 3-60 on that sturgeon. Sturgeon approved. Huh? You would never think to use those rods for sturgeon and all the fisheries we use those rods for. The beard doing no. nothing. Here, you do that. Right. <laughs> Here, you do that. I think them do it. Yeah, okay. Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. New days, new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. We're going to show you how to make fishing reels.
All right, welcome back here in studio to England, Scott Cole. So did you like that little sturgeon? Thank God I caught one more than more huh? one fish. Redemption. <laughs> yeah, redemption. That was so. good, though. I like that. Yeah, it was a good time. Good touch, buddy. All right, man. So uh, moving on. Hey, uh, we got a lot of information to get through, so we're going to get right to it. Uh, on the phone this evening, uh, no stranger to the show. We've had Mark on before. Mark Botzell, uh Salmon and Steelhead Fisheries Management with WDFW. Uh, we got you, Mark. Can you hear me? Uh, you got me, Dwayne. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, Mark. Uh, appreciate you taking the time this evening uh, to join us here on the show. I know you guys are extremely busy, and we're after hours. And uh, the fact you're willing to come on and answer some questions we have for you, I really appreciate it. So welcome back. Not a problem. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So uh, let's just get right to it. We're going to cover Area 11, Area 10 this evening. We're going to start off with Area 11. Uh, we've had a pretty lucrative quota that we've been uh, anticipating the ability to fish on. And uh, Area 11, as we all know, was closed early in June. Uh, then the reopened July 1st, and it didn't last long and abruptly closed once again. I, last I was uh, informed, we have about 3,000 uh, hatchery Chinook left on the table that we should be going after. Um, these openings and closings and yet closed again. Can you kind of explain to us what's driving these closures and why we find ourselves once again closed in Area 11 for hatchery Chinook? Sure, Dwayne, thanks. So, you know, every year when we set salmon seasons, uh, we rely on all our, our fishery stats and our models to, to try to predict what's going to happen this year. Uh, none of those models are perfect, but sometimes they are informative. Uh, the, the thing that the models don't deal well with is uh, juvenile fish. Uh, we don't really have good ways of assessing uh, juvenile abundance throughout Puget Sound. And I'm really talking about those, you know, uh, just recent out migrants or two-year-olds. Uh, we don't have good tools in the toolbox for assessing how many of those are in Puget Sound at any one given time. Uh, we also don't really know what stocks any of those, sub, uh, you know, those uh, juvenile fish are uh, that can be attributed to. So what happened in Area 11 was, uh, you know, in June, we we kind of ran up against those those fishery management thresholds that that um, you know we've agreed through through our Chinook management plan and North of Falcon. Um, so we we shut it down there, uh, and then same thing kind of in July, uh, we opened up and we had really high encounter rates on sublegal fish uh, and unmarked fish. So uh, you know we hit our thresholds that we agreed to for the sublegal fish. And, and even though we weren't managing for unmarked, you know, that's, that's the, the impact that we really care about. Um, so uh, part of the modeling, too, is, you know, we, we build in non-retention impacts, knowing that our Chinook fisheries are going to close early. Uh, this year, we didn't do that in Area 11 until September. So that's why you probably saw the regulation that came out this week where we're opening shoreline only mm -hmm. for the rest of August to at least try to get at some pinks and coho from the shore and then in in september we'll open back up the marine areas uh when we've got some non-retention impacts for chinook to be able to use gotcha yeah mark hi this is scott from brad's fishing gear nice to meet you and uh, yeah thanks thanks scott you too absolutely I, hey i want to tell you buddy i just i appreciate you coming on thank you mm -hmm. easiest thing in the world would be <laughs> to not come on not address this I do not envy your job, even in the slightest. <laughs> I could not do your job. It's challenging, right? You're caught in between all sorts of sides, politics, recreational fishermen, tribes, commercial fishermen, the whole thing. You're there in the middle. And thank you for coming on and, and helping explain what's going on there. So we're just throwing out some terms yep. there. And I'm just hoping we can maybe it just brings some clarity to some of these terms we're throwing around. We're talking about sublegals, wild encounters. Um, can you quickly just summarize, you know, your definition of those and, and how they impact our sport fishing opportunities? Sure, no problem. So sublegal, uh, legal size limit for Chinook's 22 inches. So uh, a sublegal would be any Chinook that's below 22 inches. Uh, we know that that's a mix of, uh, you know, uh, sub-adults or, or juvenile fish, uh, jack size, uh, you know, precocious fish that are coming back. And it's also a mix of uh, undersized three-year-olds. Uh, and whether those are resident fish or returning adults, um, they're all part of the mix. Um, 
and you know, the reality, Scott, is that uh, here we are, we're, we're 20 plus years into an ESA listing and uh, you know, we're, we're not really making much progress towards uh, recovering these stocks. And, uh, you know, really what we're trying to do is just hold ourselves accountable under the new management plan, uh, make sure that we're, we're uh, managing as conservatively as we can and still be able to provide opportunities. Yeah, there's a whole lot of uncertainty here, but, uh, you know, I, I think that's the reality that we're facing is the feds aren't going to wait forever for us to try to recover stuff. And believe me, uh, we know that it's not all going to be solved through fishing, uh, but we can't just sit on our hands and, and when we see stuff that's out of whack or stuff that we agreed to, we can't just sit around and say, oh, well, we think there's more fish around and it's no big deal. Sure. Mark, uh, real quick, uh, before we jump out for break here. So on the sublegal encounter rate, uh, we use, we use uh, percentages and obviously, you know, quotas for uh, max uh, uh, retention on our, um, on our hatchery adult fish. So you guys have those, uh, those models and whatnot introduced into North Falcon when you're, when you're meeting with co-managers and stuff. As we track these sublegal encounters and uh, wild encounters and whatnot, are we gaining any ground? I mean, you know, this, this particular modeling and what we go after here in these test fisheries with the test boats seem to really put us on the sidelines more often than not. We have an abundance and a robust amount of fish coming back this year, and yet here we are sidelined again because of the indicators that would point to too many sublegal encounters. You know, what's the end game here? I mean, we have this sublegal encounter rate, we end up with um, way too many surplus fish in the hatchery, the, uh, the co-managers do very well in their, uh, their commercial harvest opportunity, because obviously they don't apparently have the impact on the sublegals as we do. So are we gaining any ground with recreational fleet constantly being sidelined secondary to this sublegal encounter? Well, I mean, you know, we're always going to be continuing to examine the information we're collecting and try to figure out better, we, better ways to maximize our fishing opportunity. You know, there, again, I, I talked about the ESA issues. It's not just about salmon. The, the feds look really closely uh, at what we catch uh, in terms of orca whales. And the, the, they've asked us a bunch of questions in the recent past about our impact on juvenile fish, because in their eyes, those juvenile fish are future orca food. And so, you know, we have to take those considerations. And really, all these sublegal fish and all the adult fish, they all are part of the, the ESA equation and, and pie that we need to manage to and make sure that we're meeting all these conservation objectives that we said we were going to try and meet. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, it is, you know, those are the, uh, those are the rules that are driving some of this uh, management uh, ideals and what you guys are subjected to. So uh, we never have enough time to get through all the content and so much more to discuss. But we're going to jump out for a quick break. We'll hold you on. Uh, we come back. We need to delve into Area 10 and really uh, talk about this coho fishery and the, uh, the lack of opportunity except for this three-day window we have on the Chinook. So don't go anywhere. Jump out for a quick break. We come back more with uh, Mark Botzell here at uh, WDFW and Fisheries Management after this break right here, Fish on Northwest. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years, Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five-year top-to-prop warranty from your Honda outboard. Call or stop by Arima boats today and let them help you get into your very next boat. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy, nice fish. Beauty, gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh yeah, oh, 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 oh geez, come on. Nice fish, nice fish.
Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. All right, welcome back here to the show. We still have uh, from WDFW, Mark uh, Baldzell, Salmon Steelhead Fisheries Management. Uh, Mark, going to jump right into uh, Area 10. So we've had a phenomenal coho opportunity that started early in June uh, with the resident coho, and uh, that's one that a lot of folks look forward to. So just in comparison, in success rate going into this year, uh, do you have some numbers or you know percentages on catch rate for 2023 on the resident coho fishery versus uh, years past? Well, what we saw is a, a lot uh, better success this year. And you're right, there's a lot more fish around. Um, in June and July, we exceeded uh, what we were planning to catch in the in the preseason planning. Uh, it really went off the charts in July. Uh, we were at 250% of, of what we expected to catch in the month of July for coho. You know, almost 7,000 more fish uh, than we had planned. So... Uh, there's a lot of concerns about what that means, that abundance of coho in Central Sound. So we're, we're going to take a cautious approach for a little while. Uh, not all those fish were hatchery fish that were impacted. There's a, a number of wild stocks that we managed for in Puget Sound. So we're going to take a cautious approach. We're still staying open. We're going to reduce the daily limit to one, fit, one coho for the next little while. And as these other coho fisheries click off, We'll continue all our monitoring programs, and hopefully we'll be able to liberalize that daily limit uh, later on in, in August or September. I yeah, appreciate that, Mark. The, the resident coho fishery, uh, it's a mixture of, of marked and unmarked fish, right? Yeah, uh, in, for June and July, the, the mark rate was uh, below 50% for, for both of those time periods. Gotcha. And where do those unmarked fish come from? I mean, is it part of the muckle shoot release of a million unmarked coho? And, and why would it really matter if we experience a high catch rate if the resident coho fishery are not migratory fish? Well, yes. remember, our models are all based on coated wire tag recoveries. Okay. And what the models tell us is in July and June, we have big impacts on hood canal wild coho and Skagit wild coho. Skagit wild coho was a limiting stock in our preseason planning this year. So there's some sensitivity there with the Skagit tribes. And then also we're just two years removed from almost being in the overfish status for hood canal coho. So we do have some concerns, not really knowing what stocks those are that we're impacting, only what the model tells us. Sure. We'll know that postseason when we do all the data analysis. Good info. Thank yeah. you for the clarification. Well, that does clarify yes. with the wire code uh, tag because uh, most folks think it's uh, adipose clip or not. So uh, let's try to uh, let's try to get this in before we run out of time. So we're also experiencing an early uh, Chinook closure in Area 10. And is that uh, due to sublegal encounter rate once again? Because we did not have a very lengthy Chinook opportunity in Area 10. That being said, it's opening for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Three more days. But going into this, why why the shutdown once again? Well, it's essentially same story that we saw in Area 11, Dwayne. It's, uh, it's high sublegal encounters and high unmarked encounters. Um, differences from Area 11 is we had built those early closure and non-retention impacts. So what happened last week was after we had, you know, gotten the weekend's catch, saw that we were over on our impacts, you know, we stayed open for another four days. Uh, the test boats and the, the creel data that we got basically showed that the legal mark rate in Area 10 went from about 13% to about 40% in three days. So uh, that change in the fishery composition allows us to get some more room on where we thought we were at our impact levels. We got a little more room now. So Elliott Bay, uh, the greater Area 10 area, and Sinclair all open tomorrow morning. Gotcha. All right, before we get out of here, uh, real quickly, closure on Sinclair Inlet Fishery. I believe we had or look forward to a three fish limit and a two rod endorsement. What shut that, that, that fishery down? A lot of folks are upset about that one. 
Well, we like I said, it's opening back up tomorrow, and we don't anticipate it's going to close when Area 10 closes. Okay, good. There was just some uh, concern expressed by the tribe about if we shut down Area 10, uh, that there might be some additional uh, pressure and enforcement issues over there. Okay. So we just wanted to address those, and we did, and we're going to open back up. So it's going to remain open. Okay. Yeah, yeah just uh, one clarification for folks tuning in. Well, uh, as always, Mark, never enough time. I uh, want to thank you again. I know folks are fi- you know loading up the questions here. Uh, a lot of things that we can discuss, but there's never enough time to get it all out there. So hopefully we scratch the surface a bit created some clarification for folks and I really want to thank you for jumping on this evening thank you Mark. and at least giving us a little insight as to some of the things you guys are up against so uh, don't be a stranger we'll stay in touch we'll keep uh, we'll keep working toward this uh, together great thanks Dwayne thanks Scott you bet, you bet. Mark. have a good night all right gonna jump out for a quick break we come back we're gonna close out the show don't go anywhere we'll be back in two minutes right here at fish on Northwest the finest marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest angler Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dream through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in the studio as we wind down the show. Scott, can't thank you enough for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, and congrats again on the honor. Oh, buddy. yeah, appreciate That's that, fantastic. buddy. I mean, Kudos sponsors you, like Jordan you and, and people Tommy supporting and, us, yeah, yeah. Uh, it all works. So uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in this night, this evening. I know we probably barely scratched the surface with the information uh, from DFW and trying to get an understanding as to what's going on. It's not the end of the story. We can continue to have yeah. that dialogue. I can continue to put the, uh, the invites out there, the requests out there, try to get some folks in here in studio. Um, you know, perhaps I can even get the man himself over fish program, uh, Kelly Cunningham to come join me That'd here in studio great. at some point. Yeah. I extend that invite to him. We got a lot to talk about. It'd be great to really lay it out there and get you guys, uh, you know, to understand uh, what it is when it comes to fisheries management. It's about the transparency, right? It's totally yeah. about transparency and DFW has made it known that they really want to get that out there. Yeah. So we have an open so invite that. Yeah. for their staff to get in Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Um, anyway, so I appreciate all the uh, questions and uh, I will hang on to a number of these as we move forward and try to bring those back around. So um, with that, before we get out of here, hey, I want to remind everybody it's back after three years in hiatus. The Sportco tent sale is up and running starting today, going through the 27th of August. Every single day they got the tent sale on. You are not going to save more money than currently at the tent sale. And be sure to get down there. The hot dog lady, housewife hot dogs is in the house, uh, and you need to take advantage of that. That is going to do it for us this week here, live in studio and on Root Sports. Uh, So glad you could join us. Uh, Get out, have a great weekend, and we will see you next week right here from the studio at Fish Out Northwest.